Okay, this is the last question of question two, right? 2.4. It says, table one on Annex D, right? So we're going to have to use the addendum, shows the top marginal tax rate for individuals in the G20 countries. This table provides present and past data on the top marginal tax rates. It was updated in January 2019. Okay, so this is the table, right, in the appendix, all these different countries, the top um, tax rate in 2019, and then the tax rate in a pre the previous year, I presume that's 2018 or what it was previously. Okay, cool. So it says, right, name the country that has the biggest range between 2019 and the past. Oh, just the past. Okay, this is quite big. Um, and the past top, top marginal tax rates. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to look along this whole table and see where things have changed, okay? Where the top marginal tax rate has changed significantly. Now, if we look down here, all of these have actually stayed the same. Okay, this one hasn't, so the United States hasn't. India hasn't, but Argentina, literally all of them haven't, except for India and the United States. Now, by just looking at it, right, you can see the difference between um, thirty nine point six and thirty seven is larger than the difference between thirty five point five four and thirty five point eight eight. Okay, so we can see that the difference is larger for United States, right? It doesn't ask us to calculate calculate it, right? And remember, the range is just means the difference, right? So it doesn't mean increase, decrease. It just means the difference. Like what what do you need to do to fill in the gap between these two? It would be two point six, right? The gap between these two. Um, would be to 3.4. I hope that's correct. Yeah, 3.4, right? So this is a much bigger gap. So if we go back to the question, name the country that has the biggest range, right? Which means biggest difference. Doesn't mean positive, doesn't mean negative, just means what is the gap? The gap between the two, 2.6, right? Um, between 2019 and the past. So we're going to say 2.4.1. We're going to say the United States of America. If you hear a weird bird outside, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Cool. So that is that question done. Okay. Now, let's look at the next question. It says determine to three decimal places. So they want decimal places, right? The probability of randomly selecting one, excuse me, of the G20 countries where the latest tax rates changed from the previous tax rates. Okay, so let's just double check which ones have changed. Okay, so the only ones that have changed are India and United States. We already got that. Okay, so let's just double check how many countries there are. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 23. Okay, so there's 23 countries in the G20, <laughs> which is um, a bit counterintuitive. But nonetheless, there are 23 countries. Okay, so two out of the 23 countries, all right, are, have tax rates that have changed. Okay, so let's just quickly read the question. It says, the probability of randomly selecting one of the G20 countries, where there's 23, where the latest tax rates changed. So, right, we want, we, what the, the event we want, remember the probability, we always say the event we want, right, over the possible events. Okay, that's the whole thing with prob probability, right? So the events we want is either the USA or, some say or, India, right? We want one of those two. And the possible events are the 23 countries, right? The 23 countries we can actually pick if we just picked a country at random. So it would be two over 23, right? There's only two countries out of the 23 that meet our criteria of having their tax rates changed. So this is our probability, okay? Right, probability just means likelihood, right? So the highest likelihood you could have is if it was 23 over 23, because probability can never be greater than one, right? You can't say there's over 100% chance of something happen. 100% means it certainly will happen. You can't have more than 100%. But this probability will tell us what is the likelihood of choosing the USA 
or India from all of the possible countries that you can choose. Okay, so let's just say 2 divided by 23. So it is, how many decimal places did it say we had to do it to? It said 3 decimal places. So it's 0 0.08695, okay? So to 3 decimal places, it will be 0 0.87 because 9 is greater than 5. Therefore, we round up, okay? So that is our answer for that question. Remember, probability has to be between 0 and 1, okay? Because it's the likelihood. How likely is something happening? Think about it with a test, right? With the test, you can either get between 0% and 100%. You can't get more or less, okay? Similar to that, okay? So let's now move on, okay? So 2.4.3. Right, it says use the 2019 top marginal tax rate and answer the following questions. So determine quartile 2 and then the interquartile range is given as 12. So we have to determine these, right? So verify showing all calculations, right, whether the given interquartile range is correct. Oh, we have to do these separately. Sorry, I thought this was one thing altogether. So we have to do these separately. So let's just start with the quartile 2. Now, just let me label that correctly. Okay, so quartile two, what's important about quartile two? Quartile two is the same as the median. They call it quartile two because they're testing whether you understand what that means. Median means middle. Okay, so let's look at our data. Okay, what is absolutely fabulous about this is they've actually given us the tax rates in descending order. Do you see that? Because it goes from the biggest to the smallest. Okay, so the median would be the middle of 23, right? Now, how do we find the middle of 23 without just counting? Okay, so what we do is we say 23, right, divided by 2, because we kind of want to find the middle. If we want to find the middle, we generally divide by 2. If you put that into your calculator, it would be 11.5. So in this case, we're probably thinking it's going to be 12. We round that off to 12, right? So 12 is in the middle. If 12 is in the middle, right, we have 11 on that side of the 12 and 11 on that side of the 12 to get us to 23. So the 12th country is going to be our median value. So let's find the 12th country. We count always from the smallest, right? Not from the biggest. So we're going to count here from the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, it is Switzerland, okay? Switzerland. So, it would be Switzerland at 40%. Okay, that would be quartile 2, our median. So, what they're doing here is they're actually testing box and whisker, okay? They're testing box and whisker, which is quite strange, actually. Right, they're testing box and whistle. Let me just count so I did it right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. Right, they're testing box and whisker without making us actually draw the box and whisker, which is a little bit sneaky, right? Because remember, when we talk about quartile ranges and that sort of thing, we're generally thinking about a box and whisker, okay? So now we've got our median. Perfect. Okay, let's go on to our next question. So it says... The interquartile range is given as 12, right? And then it says verify showing all calculations whether the given interquartile range is correct. Okay, so let's go over here. Let me just make 100% sure that you can see what I'm writing. Okay, so remember to leave a line between questions. So the interquartile range, that's how I write it, right, is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. Okay, that's what it is. So what we need to do is we need to find that in our data set. Now, quartile one is basically the median, right? Listen to me carefully because it's very important. It is the median of the values below the actual median. So it's the median of these guys. So the median of the lower half, right, equals quartile one, right? And the median of the top half of the data, right, the median of that equals quartile 3. Okay, so let's do exactly what we did to find the median of this, to find the median of the bottom half. 
So we know that below 12, there are 11 different countries. Okay? So we're going to say, what is half of 11? Right? If you check in your calculator, it's 5.5. .5. So this is for quartile 1. Right? Then we know that it's probably going to be the sixth term from the very smallest term. So let's just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so it is going to be Canada. Okay, so that's quartile 1. Right, so quartile 1 is Canada. Canada at 33%. Okay, Canada at 33%. Okay, now let's do it for the top half. We know for the top half, there's also 11, right? So we also know that the median of the top half is going to be 6 after this median at the bottom, okay? So we're going to count 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is, oh, I lost my place now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It'll be France, okay? Cool. So that's going to be quartal 3, okay? So quartal 3, right? is also going to, quartile three is going to be France at 40, ooh, 45%, okay? Let me just recap that, right? So when we get the median, we say, what is the middle of the data, okay? And what I said is we, we, we calculate how many data points there are, which is 23, we divide it by two, and we find the middle term. Okay, because it's uneven or odd in this case, there's a clear middle. Right? This is the middle, there's 11 on that side, 11 on that side. Okay, So that's quite easy to find. Okay, If it is an even number, and this is quite important, right? if it was an even number, what you would have to do is you would have to say, so let's just say, I'm just going to give you another little example here. Let's just say there was 24 countries. The median, right, the median would be 24 divided by 2, which equals 12. Now, you might think, okay, Margie, obviously, then it's 12, right? But what happens is it's not actually 12 because it's saying, you know, here's 11, here's 12, here's 13, here's 14, right? But if you make it 12, it means that there's 12 data points on that side and only 11 on that side, right? So it's not exactly in the middle. The middle is actually between 12 and 13, Right? So what you need to do when the number of terms is even, you add what these terms are together, whatever 12 equals and whatever 13 equals, and you divide that by 2, okay, to get what the actual median is. In this case, because the median is an uneven number or an odd number, it's easy to find it because you know that there's an even number on either side. Right? There's 11 on that side, 11 on that side. Okay? Now, what we do to get quartile 1 and quartile 3 is we say, what is the median of the half that is below the actual median? And what is the median, right, for quartile 3 of the top that is above the median? Okay? So, for quartile 1, we said there is 11 terms. 11 divided by 2 gives 5.5. .5. We round that off to 6. And we can find the middle term at 33. We did the same over there. If there's an even number, right, on either side, you repeat what I did over here, right? You find what that even number divided by 2 equals. And then you take that number, 12 or whatever it is, and you look at the term above it. You add them together and you divide by 2. Okay, don't get confused about this. I'm just wanting to give you the alternative way of doing this just so that it isn't confusing if you do get an even number. Okay, so let's just jump back to the question. So the interquartile range is going to equal 45% minus 33%, which equals 12%. Okay, because we subtract Q1 from Q3. And that gives us 12%. So, yes, it is correct. It is 12. So we say, therefore, it is correct. And that is the answer. Okay. So if this is confusing for you guys, just go over this video a number of times. It's not supposed to be um, complicated. 
It's just another way of testing a box and whisker. What I'm gonna do just very quickly is I'm gonna show you the different points of a box and whisker so that you can remember this. Okay, a box and whisker is drawn like this. Okay, and it's got five, oh, sorry, I bumped the camera there. It has five key places that we need to take note of. It's the max value, right? Max means top. Min, right? Those are the two extremes. Here is quartile three. Here is quartile one. And here is quartile two or the median. So sometimes you'll be given a box and whisker and asked to read things off. In this case, they actually gave you quite a tricky one. They gave you the data points, right? All the different points that underlie this type of structure. Okay, I hope that wasn't confusing and I hope that gave you a bit of clarity. So now we are finished with question two and we can move on to question three.